Hello everybody, my name is Luke Moore and this is Hot Limode and today on Hot Limode we are coming to you with your Milan Fashion Week celebrity roast and review for spring 2024. We have a lot to discuss. We have Gucci and Prada and Diesel and Fendi, Bottega. We got people to talk about. We got places to be. So first up we have Aaliyah Bot, and she is wearing Gucci. Now listen, for context from what I heard when I was at Gucci, the directive sort of was casual, you know, simple, easy, effortless. It sort of plays into what Sabato de Sarno actually showed at the collection, which we'll get into in the next video. You're going to see a lot of Gucci celebrities and they're going to be very sort of toned down, I would say. It's very different from what we saw with Alessandra Michele. Doesn't mean it's great. It just means it happened. First up, Aaliyah Bot. She's wearing this knit little polo shirt. It's green. It's very vibrant. It's bright. She's then wearing a blue pair of flare pants. It's a simple sort of easy jean with a little front crease. Then we have her wearing the Jackie bag. It's like a little mini version and a red shoe. It's a little too casual for me. Now here's the thing. I understand that that's what the brand wants. Great. Love that. But I think that we'll see over time there are a lot of celebrities that actually go for a little bit of like a theme moment. This to me feels a little bit too casual and I'm saying that is me who showed up to the show in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I think the jean fit is a little baggy. I think the shirt in the green is just a little bit much. I like the shoe. I think the shoe looks cute. I just wish I got to see more of the shoe. I just don't really feel like we got a amazing experience. It feels just too toned down. Next up we have Ayo Edebury and she is wearing Prada. Now she's going for a full silk experience. We have this beautiful little lavender tank top. I'm just obsessed. I think it's a beautiful color. I also like Prada. I think when they do silks, it's really lovely. It's really sweet. It's really fun. I also think that the purple juxtaposed against this gray pencil skirt that is just below knee length. It's a little shin moment. I think it's cute. I think it's fun. I think it works. I think honestly in a weird way it sort of plays into the Prada logo and the gray background. She's wearing a little black Prada bag, black Prada shoes, nothing too crazy there. It is simple. It is effortless. It is toned down. At the same time I think the colors work. So that's a personal preference thing. I also love her so Yes, chef. Next up, we have Bad Bunny, who is wearing Gucci. He's the new face of the Gucci campaign with Kendall Jenner. They're also dating. We'll get into Kendall's look after, but he's wearing pretty much a very oversized white button-down shirt. Has a big pocket on the side. We can't really see that because this photo is overexposed. I apologize. He's also then wearing a pair of semi-split jeans. So again, really, really simple, really, really casual, really, really marketable, commercial. It's something that, again, we'll talk about when we get into the collection in a different video. And he's wearing a Gucci Jackie bag again, pushing bags, pushing a staple sort of item. I think that it's a little bit more put together casual than I would say Leah Bot's look because I know that it's like a jean and a shirt. This at least like the big oversized white button down. It's cuter I think than the green polo knit, you know, just saying. But again, it's a little simple, a little bit blah, a little bit boring. I understand again that was a directive here for it. Love that for you guys. It's just I need more. I would love more. Next up, we have Kate Blanchett wearing Giorgio Armani. Listen, Kate Blanchett, she's a fashion girly. She knows what's up. She's wearing this beautiful jumpsuit, deep, deep plunge. There is a black tailored jumpsuit, and then it seems to be fully embellished with little black crystals. They look to be circular or at least half circular. They're spherical, but cut in half and then placed on top. There is a shoulder that juts out. Nice, easy, breezy. And then there's a sleeve, but it seems like the sleeve is actually kind of like cape. Like we can see the full arm exposed and it doesn't seem that the sleeve actually follows the arm. So that's why I think it's more of a cape. We can see that there is a sort of zipper detail that runs from, I'm gonna say the top of the stomach down to around the pelvic area. Wouldn't say I love that. Maybe it's to draw a focal point to that area. I don't really know why you would want to do that because it's just a beautifully fitted jumpsuit. So I don't really know if we need all that. And I do think that it distracts a bit from what's going on in the rest of the look. The rest of the look, I think, does itself so many favors. It says, I know how to tailor. I know how to draw a little bit of attention. I know how to do refinement, elegant sleekness. It feels very Giorgio Armani. I just think that middle part makes me question, which for me is also very much so Giorgio Armani. Listen, I think the boot works. I think it's cute. I think it's nice. All in all, besides that middle section detail, we're good on the Cape Blanchett moment. It's good. It's happy. It's wonderful. It's just, there's one little you know, landing strip eyesore that we need to get rid of. Next up we have Charlie D'Amelio, who honestly, I appreciate Chuck. I, I like Chuck. I like where Chuck's going. She's trying, she's moving, she's grooving. Here's the thing. 
normally Charlie goes very sort of cocktail dress, easy, understandable Gen Z. But here I feel like she's at least playing into a little bit more of the Prada-isms. First things first, you have this beautiful wool sweater in gray. Very casual Prada, very referential Prada. Go back to 1989, that's what you're getting. And then on top of it, when you add in this big voluminous skirt in white, very much so adds in and plays into that really early Prada collection and Prada ethos, Prada aesthetic. Now the look is actually from last season. They just have stripped away the suede jacket that was over top, which I think is smart because it was really, really hot in Milan. Again, like it was hot almost everywhere the entire time. It was kind of necessary to strip away a lot of that sort of stuff. But the skirt, love the skirt. It's a beautiful white silk, but the thing is you can't really tell. It actually has a sheer overlay, which lays up on top at the waist and then comes down. And right where you get to the end of those flowers, that's where it stops. So you can see these beautiful fabric flower appliques that run all along the circumference of the skirt. Look at me using math terminology. It's gorgeous. It not only plays into the history of Prada, which is oftentimes looking at new, cute, fun embellishments, trying to make it experimental and interesting. And I do think that this sort of bump of these flowers is really lovely. It's very Prada. Honestly, I think it's a cute look. I think it works. I think it makes sense. I think that it's nice that Charlie's actually playing into much more of early Prada references rather than just sort of doing like commercial hot girl renegade. I, I'm happy with that. I want that. I need more of that. Next up, we have Christina Ricci and she is wearing Fendi. Now this looks to be a part jersey dress and then it turns into a chainmail of sorts, an oraton, and it sort of creates a bust area detail. It nips in at the waist and then flows all the way to the hem of the dress. I'm trying to figure out if maybe this is like a Versace reference. It looks to me like oraton, which is a Versace trademark fabric. It has a movement to it. I'm also, I have to say, very impressed with the fact that it doesn't look like the chainmail is actually pulling down the rest of the dress, so it must be a very weighty and sturdy fabric going on in the gray on the outside of this sort of contour detail motif. I don't hate it. Listen, I don't think it's the most interesting dress in the entire world, but I think it fits her well. I think the mixing of materials works. I think the grays look good together. It highlights the body in a nice way. Look at me saying nice things about Kim Jones's Fendi. I'm happy. As for the yellow gloves and little bag, I was trying to add a pop of color. The blue, the styling there isn't really for me, but at the same time, I think the bag works with the dress. I think that the pops of color are very Kim Jones trying to dissuade from the British sensibility that he has. And overall, again, it fits her. So I'll take it. Next up, we have Demi Moore wearing Fendi. Now she is wearing a rib knit little halter style tank top and a little shin length drape rib knit skirt that matches in this sort of burnt orange. I do like the fact that as the rib knit expands, we can actually see the white underneath. And again, we talked about this with the Erdem collection. It's just this intriguing element of seeing the underneath when fabrics are like accordions. They pull together, they pull and push against each other, and then you can see the underlayer exposed as they are stretched. I just think it's cool. And you can see that in reality where it's draped, it's stretched. Where it is, I would say, a little bit more stretched at the bust because naturally there are people that they have bigger bust lines, and so that's going to stretch the fabric. It's just interesting to see and I think it's cool to see and again I just think it's something that we should not be afraid of something we should highlight something that we should actually play into I do like the little baby blue periwinkle blue silk Fendi logo shawl jacket you know I like the way that she's wearing it I think that burnt orange and the blue play off of each other well the bag and the shoe not trying to take any attention away I think it's smart I think it looks nice again good Kim Jones for Fendi I'll take it next up we have Dixie D'Amelio serving us up look Shocker. I'm happy. I'm content. I love it. I'm here for it. She's wearing this, I believe it's like a knit bodysuit. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just black cat suit. It's full length. It has a little bit of a plunge, a scoop neckline. Sweet. But then she's wearing this big faux fur red coat over top. It's elegant. The color pops on her. I think the fact that they played the black cat suit against her features, which is black hair, slicked down, big bushy black eyebrows. I think it's really smart. I think it's really, really nice. And that red really, really is allowed to pop on the black canvas. I do like the red shoes. Again, beautiful patent leather. The heel is exciting. That sharp toe just, just stab somebody and that is lovely. That's where you get that color from. The hug bag, which is the new Ferragamo bag. It looks like it's hugging with those beautiful Giancini clasps. She looks good. She looks exciting. And again, it was hot out. 
as somebody that was wearing a red coat of sorts to this show, it was hot out. It was, I'm sweating. And so the fact that she's wearing this faux fur, she's going for it. I'm happy. I'm proud. This is the moment. This is what I mean. Listen, D. Emilio sisters, we're watching, we're living, we're laughing, we're loving, and we want you to continue this. This is what like the TikTok fashion should be. It should be intriguing and exciting and cool and let yourselves be a part of these brands that you're going to the shows of. That's what we want. Thank you. You can renegade all you want. Next up, we have Emma Watson wearing Prada. Listen, Emma Watson, she's beautiful. She's luscious. The dress, it's a little simple. It is a halter neck style, and I do think that it fits her rather beautifully. And also, I feel like at the hem of the dress, there's a gold sort of thread or gold sort of embellishment, and then it seems to continue, honestly, around the rest of the dress. It's really, really light. It's really, really subtle. If that gold coming in, and wrapping around and becoming straps in the back. In that regard, to me, it actually feels very Emma Watson. I feel like she is very simple, elegant, easy, lets her work and herself speak for herself. In a weird way, I actually do kind of like the dress. I'm, I'm sold on it. I think it also, maybe in a weird way, plays into like the fact that Prada's doing fine jewelry now. A lot of the time you see this beautiful gold jewelry. I do actually like the dress. Again, I think that it fits into this aesthetic of Prada store product commerciality rather than product sort of avant-garde intelligent heightened thinking and in a weird way normally i think of emma watson as like intelligent cerebral higher thinking sort of vibe and i'm sure she does respect it in a fashion sense it actually kind of makes sense when i think about mutual prada and emma watson coming together but it also makes sense that she's going to wear things that are a little bit easier a little bit subtler a little bit more classic she's giving me the runaround in my brain i'm overthinking it but I think that's chic. I'm into it. Next up, we have to talk about and hype in now. For those of you like me that don't know too, too much about K-pop boy bands. Listen, I know BTS. That's it. But I learned about a new one called and hype in because my TikTok, which is at Hot Lamode, if you don't already follow it, essentially blew up because I thought that I was like posting videos about Ayo Edebiri, Charlie D'Amelio, but no, no, no. All anybody really cared about was and hype in. That's it. So shout out to Enhypen. You made my video go viral. I appreciate all of the stands. You guys have secured me my seat at Prada next season, so I love you all. Now, let's start with Nikki, who is on the left. Now, everybody here is wearing Prada. It's the fall 2023 collection, and Nikki is wearing this beautiful navy blue, I believe. It, it looks like a navy blue to me. Little wool varsity jacket, and it has little leather patches that go across the back of the shoulder area, as well as it sits right where the sleeve seam is. I like it. I think it's cute. I think it's a beautiful jacket. As for the black tank top and the dress pant with the black shoe, I don't hate it. I think that the jacket is meant to be the focal point. Do I think it could be a little bit more exciting? Sure, absolutely, I do. But do I know that that jacket is beautiful 100% and that I would probably wear it even though I don't really love leather on wool? Yeah. I probably would, so I shan't be mad. Next up, we have Jay, who is wearing a bomber jacket. It's military green. It has the orange inside lining. Listen, I don't love it because I just think I have like, oh, bomber jacket overness. I feel like fashion is going at a very quick pace cycle, and I feel like bomber jackets only just went out a few years ago, and now I feel like we're trying to make them go in again, and I don't want that. But at the same time, do I understand the context of why this bomber jacket exists? Yes, Raph Simmons very much so built his name on bomber jackets, something that eventually it got into knits and that's what everybody loves Raf for. But bomber jackets, that Riot 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 collection, 2001, very much so what Raf is known for. So like, I'm not mad about it, uh, honestly. There was a version on the runway that was a little bit more exciting and I kind of wish that had happened. But at the same time, I feel like they're trying to just do like cool, casual, still very sort of like guys doing their thing, looking hot and sexy, but they're wearing Prada. So again, Kind of boring, not really into it. I want a little bit more fashion. Next up we have Sung Hoon. That suede jacket, it's nice. It's a beautiful suede blazer in brown. Honestly, Mrs. Prada loves brown. She always says that it's the least commercial color and that's why she loves it. So I love that because she loves it and we're here and we're together and we're happening. I also think that suede is beautiful material. It's a lovely take on a type of leather. It also very much so probably ties into the history of Prada pre mucha designing for the brand. It probably goes back to Prada, Fratelli Prada, which is the luxury and leather goods makers that essentially started in the 1930s 
30s. I do like it. The t-shirt with a little Prada logo, casual, understand it. The black pant, again, get it, totally, you know, understand. I do wish maybe the shoe was a little bit less black and maybe a little bit more brown. I wish there was a little bit going on from the waist below that felt a little bit more built into the brown, a little bit more different color palettes because everybody's wearing black pants and the same shoes, which again, I get. Prada wants to push the shoe. Love that for you. Just like, I know that there's a different color combo there. I would love to have seen that. Next up, we have Jake, who's wearing this full black suit. In reality, is it boring? Absolutely. It's a black suit jacket and a black pair of pants. And at the same time, like, do I want to find something prada about it? Sure. I do really like the little lapel. It's more of a collar. I love it. I think it's subtle. I like that it diverts from the normal sort of lapel shape that we see, especially with menswear. And then something, I don't know if I'm just being dramatic because the jacket is fully buttoned up, but I kind of love that he's like holding himself because it feels very Mutra Prada coded, like the way that she holds her little jackets and, you know, has models hold her jackets in that way. So Jake, just going forward, if we're seeing each other, we're, we're, you know, we're conversating. The next time you do this, just like have the jacket open. Life would be great. I would say this man understands. He is, I love, I stand. Pants, they're okay, they're fine. Again, I think that the black shoe makes sense with the rest of the look, cool. Suno, I'm unsure how to say it and I apologize in advance. I'm trying, love it, sold. I would do a lot of things for that cardigan with the built-in collar. So this is a full, beautiful, I'm assuming like it's a cashmere, it's a gorgeous wool, probably like some virgin sheep in a high mountain somewhere. That's where they got it from, but it's in this beautiful brown. It's lovely, it's gorgeous. And then you have this gorgeous little light cream collar in a button-down sort of shirt style. The collar is a little bit big, it's a little bit boisterous. And at the same time, it's not actually because there's a shirt underneath. It's because collar is actually attached to the inside of the cardigan. And so it's like a faux shirt moment. I love it. I think it's super, honestly, Prada. And I do think that weirdly enough, the black pant I'm sold on the shoe again, it's tough. Next to him, we have Jung Won, who is wearing again Prada. It's a black wool, to me, it looks like a boiler suit, but I know it's not. It's actually some sort of jacket style done in this really beautiful deep black wool that instead of sitting over top of the pant, which normally is what happens when you have a blazer of this sort, in fact, it's been tucked in, which to me again, feels like a weird Raph Simmons meets your Prada-like styling thing that I enjoy. Am I gonna do this? Absolutely not. But would I like to do it? Sure, 100%. I like the idea of styling things in strange ways. Making a two-piece suit essentially become like a boiler suit of sorts, or at least leading the eye to believe that is what we're seeing. That's chic, that's elegant, that's fashion, that's moments, that's styling, that's that's what you want, that's what you need. Do I think that the shoes work? Yes, 100% here, all black, totally fine. And then we have He Sung, who's wearing this beautiful cream coat with green and some sort of orangey motif that runs alongside of it. It sits on the sleeves. It's really, really great. I think the green really pops super duper well. And then he's wearing a collarless little cardigan underneath, or at least it looks like a collarless little cardigan in this beautiful little periwinkle blue. He has a black pant and a little black shoe. Again, I just overall wish that the shoes changed for everybody that wasn't wearing colors that necessarily complement black. So I don't know. I just... I just kind of wish that like Sung Hoon and Suno kind of got looks that, oh, and He Sung all got looks, at least from the waist down, that were a little bit more complimentary of what was going on up top. Everybody else, I like the vibes, think it makes sense. I think it's a little blah, it's a little boring, a little bit, mm. but at the same time, I understand it, I get it. So yeah, and Hypen, we are here, we are seeing each other. We stand. Next up we have Halle Bailey who is wearing Gucci. Now, honestly, I kind of like this little black A-line coat. I think it's beautiful. I think it looks lovely on her. A white button down shirt that also seems dressed like the length of it. I think maybe the shape of it also feels somewhat A-line. I like the fact that it's a coat dress. I think that it kind of fits in with Sabja Desarno's whole ethos of sort of simplicity, ease, effortlessness. It kind of makes sense. The black boots, I think fine. They complement, they work. I personally like an A-line, so maybe that's just me. Do I find it a bit boring? Absolutely, 100% without a doubt. But at the same time, do I think that that is what the prompt was? Yes, and so, I can't really be that mad about it. Next up, we have Hunter Schaefer, who is my woman. She's a fashion girl. She understands. She wants to be, she wants to put herself in and be washed over with the aesthetics and the vibes of the designer. So she's wearing the spring 2024 menswear look. I love it. It's a camel beigey sort of button down shirt. And then over top, I believe that they're actually sewn on are fabric flowers and they're really beautiful. Like the way that they got these orange ones to almost sort of fold and crinkle in the way that 
certain foliages in my apartment that I haven't watered super duper well look, I think it's cool. I think it adds a texture and a dynamicism to it that honestly, we normally wouldn't get when you're doing fabric flowers. Normally fabric flowers are beautiful and elegant. And I think the great thing about Prada is it's like, oh, well, it doesn't have to be. We can make them kind of scary looking. We can make them kind of ugly. We can do them in colors that people would be uncomfortable by. And I think that's the thing that makes Prada so, so great. On the other side, they look dead. They look like dead house plants. Even the black, I just, I think that there's an element of it where they're like, no, 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 we want you to see that like plants die. Put them in your shirt and it can still be chic and elegant. We then have a black little board short. I think it's cute. It's a shortened version essentially of a dress pan. It's nice. It's sweet. Sweet. It makes sense. Then she has little gray socks on. I like the fact that she did the gray socks. I think that it differentiates her leg from the shoe, which is nice. And then the shoes, listen again, not for me, but happy for you. At least we're sort of tying in the black from not only the shirt where you have that black flower, but also the shorts and the bag. It, it, it's fine. There, I think it works. I think it complements. Next up, we have Jaden Smith wearing diesel. I love a diesel. I like the way that it's deconstructed. I think Glenn Martin's very, very smart. I think that this shirt is honestly a beautiful color and the fact that you have all of this distressing, making it look like it's been on a building site for quite some time is very elegant. It's cool. I also think there's like an element of allowing deconstruction to be something that should be appreciated, not as something that should be seen as like ugly, boring, gross, not appropriate. I think that that's respectable. I also like the fact that the Diesel D does have these sort of cutouts around it. We can see that both on the actual bodice of the shirt. I feel weird saying bodice of the shirt, but that's, that's what it is. And also on the sleeve, I like the fact that you can actually see through. I think it's cool. And then on top of it, you have Glenn Martin's very signature sort of pants that have multiple pockets and they layer on top of each other and they create this like weird kind of ugly effect and the way that they pool onto the shoe is really distressing. But again, I think that's kind of the point. If you look at Glenn Martin's work for Y Project, that's very much so what he does. And so it's interesting to see it brought into Diesel. I love the colors. I love the cracking. I love the fact that these clothes look like they have really seen some shit. I think that's perfectly Glenn Martin's for Diesel. And that's wonderful to me. Next up, we have Jodie Turner Smith, who is wearing Gucci. Again, I think this is a better way of going about this Gucci sort of commerciality. If the look works together, it's fine. Gray crop top in what I would say is a very sort of corporate fabric. And then you have a double-breasted coat slung over the shoulder. It's nice. But then you pair it with a jean, a baggy black jean. And I think that it works. I think it's fine. I think that there's a casualness to it. You're bringing the denim in with fabrics that are a little bit more sort of conservative. But at the same time, I think that there is a genuine color story working, the gray with black. I think it makes sense. I think it's fine. We're really pushing the Gucci belt. They're really trying to bring that bad boy back. I don't know if that's going to happen. Listen, you can do simple. You can do every day. You can do casual. You can do all that. It's great. Just like make sure it all works together. Make sure it's all believable. If I saw Jody Turner Smith walking down the street in this, I'd say, great, chic, elegant. How wonderful. I love that. If I saw Jody Turner Smith walking down the street in that Aaliyah bot look, I'd say, oh no, Jody. What are you doing? We then had Julia Roberts who showed up and showed out. I was very excited about Julia Roberts. It's this lovely little skirt suit. There are some very wide pleats in there and this beautiful jacket. It's all in this gray suiting fabric. Honestly, I, I'm just kind of obsessed. I like the little cardigan underneath. Again, I don't know how she wasn't sweating. Her little took us off because I certainly was. And again, I just think that there's a way of going about doing casual style, easy, effortless. And it also like making sense. It also looking good. It also feeling chic. And I think this is that. I'm not going to get mad at a beautiful skirt suit. I feel like we don't see enough skirt suits anymore. Do I obviously like want more fashion? Yeah, absolutely. I do. But again, and we'll talk about this with Gucci. I don't think that is the vibe. And if this is what the aesthetic is, I'm gonna try to look at it from that perspective and say, okay, let's see. You know what I mean? Next up we have Kendall Jenner wearing a little trench coat dress. Again, I don't hate it. I really don't. I actually love the bag. I think the bag is cute. That's that Gucci Rosso, that Ancora Rosso. And it's a beautiful color. I think it really, really works well. I think it can be something that's super duper dynamic. Oh, actually the shoes also are very much so in that 
ancora rosso. And it makes sense. I think that it plays well off the trench. Again, they're trying to push the accessories. They're trying to get the bags and the shoes in front of people. They want them to be the thing that people really, really care about. So I'm wondering if also the clothing on these celebrities is meant to sort of be a backdrop element and we're meant to focus on a lot of the accessories rather than the looks themselves. Because if we talk about Alessandra Michele, what was the thing that sold? Those sneakers sold, those bags sold. Like that was it. Listen, the crazy outfits or whatever, they were beautiful to look at. They were a great marketing strategy, but I don't know how many of those things sold unless it was a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, tracksuit. And so in reality, do I think it's smart for Gucci to rather focus on the accessories? Yeah, I get it. I understand. I It makes sense. Next up, we have Kylie Jenner, who is wearing Prada. She showed up to the show. And the thing is, she's actually wearing not a look from a recent collection whatsoever, which I think is really, really interesting, honestly. But she's wearing this black fitted turtleneck. It's really sort of simple. It has the Prada triangle little logo on the side of the neck. This turtleneck is actually a full dress. But this big faux crystal, what is called the chandelier skirt, is kind of different because we haven't really seen that from Prada in a hot minute. Normally brands dress celebrities in looks that are from recent collections, maybe the past season, maybe the past two seasons, maybe a resort or pre-fall lookbook that, you know, maybe we haven't seen. But Kylie is wearing this skirt that's actually from the spring 2010 collection. So that spring 2010 collection was actually inspired by interiors, a lot of different interiors. And so you're getting this skirt that essentially is probably referencing a chandelier. That's why it's called a chandelier skirt. But when you look at these big sort of crystals, they're big drop crystals in this lovely sort of shape. And they are essentially sitting inside of little squares of other crystals almost like a crystal chain situation. It is really lovely. It's a beautiful skirt. I like when people do a reference. I feel like Kylie normally I'm not expecting a reference from. I'm not like, oh, Kylie, fashion, reference, great, iconic, wonderful. But this, this is a good fashion reference. I also like the fact that Kylie got Prada to actually like circumnavigate, recreate a little Prada moment from the archive too. It's very fun. It's very chic. It's very cute. It's very exciting. I like when they do these little custom moments that reference old Prada collections. The turtleneck, it's fine. Do I wish that maybe it was like a full dress? Sure, absolutely. And at the same time, I do understand that this fitted black turtleneck dress is very much so a Kylie Jenner sort of style. I think the Kardashian Jenners are very into their body con styles that fit them and really sort of show off their shape. And so it makes sense, but at least we're mixing it with a little bit of Prada referencing, which I'm happy about. Next up, we have Letitia Wright, who is wearing Prada. Now, she is wearing a suit that is made up of brown and black houndstooth. It honestly is kind of lovely, and also something that I've learned in looking up and trying to understand this look, is that houndstooth is sort of bigger of that motif, but they call it dog's tooth if it's a smaller motif. So I feel like this is probably a dog's tooth rather than a hound's tooth, but we learn something new every day. It's again, pretty simple, I would say. I feel like it's not really super out there, not really super exciting, not really super interesting. Do I think that it feels very commercial product, something you'd find in the store? Absolutely, and that's fine. I don't know, I want a little bit more. I like Letitia Wright, I think she's a fashion girly. She's face of Prada, I want like a little bit more excitement from her. And I think that if she wants to wear suits, because we saw her at Vogue World in London wearing a suit, that's fine. I love that for you. It's just like, I want a little bit of pop excitement, cool, chic fashion. I get it. You know, the black shoe fits in with the black on the dog's tooth, but at the same time, just a little bit more jazz you know, a little bit more pizzazz. I think that she could have done a suit that had one of those sort of inflated jackets at the back like we saw last season from Prada. And I think that's my thing is like, there's ways to do really simple, easy, minimal styles, but give it a little bit of a Prada flair. And I would like for that to have happened. Here. Next up we have Mae Nagano and she is wearing Prada. Listen, I love this dress. I think it's a beautiful little dress. It's sleeveless, it's a sheath, it has these beautiful darts in the front that really just nip in the waist. There's this little sort of utilitarian pocket flap, but I don't believe that there's actually a pocket there, which makes me laugh. And then it's a shin length pale yellow dress. It's in a lovely, lovely little fabric. I, I just think it fits beautifully. I think the colors are very quintessential Prada. It's a little bit off but there's something about it that's just so sweet on her. I think the faux pocket is cute. I think the shoes and the bag make sense. I get it, I understand it. If you're gonna do simple, make sure it's effortless. It's easy, but it's also incredibly well done. And I think this is that. And also this to me feels much more Prada in a way that we've been seeing it on the runway recently. So I'm happier with that rather than just like people doing commercial styles and then they're not really super exciting or jazzed up or fun and funky. Next up we have Naomi Campbell wearing Fendi and like honestly, 
I like the jacket. This really sort of creamy beige is a lovely color, honestly, and it's a full sort of monochrome outfit. We can see that up top, the jacket, it seems to be a wrap sort of jacket of sorts. It has a very long lapel that turns into a little bit of like a sailor flap at the back, I believe, or some sort of exaggerated lapel. We can also see that the sleeves, I don't know, they don't really fit super great. Like one of them, it looks a little bit baggy at the elbow area. As for the skirt, it's draped. I just don't really get the drape there. I just, there's a lot going on for me and I'm not really understanding it. It also just like raises itself. It just seems like a weird skirt. And I think just a nice fitted skirt would have been beautiful. Let the jacket do the talking, the skirt be simple and effortless and easy. But now the skirt had to, try. It's okay. You don't have to try. Don't, please don't try. As for the boots, I think they make sense. They seem to be sort of leather sock boot style that goes up, I believe, above the knee. So that again plays into the whole monochrome outfit detail, etc, etc. But at the same time, I think that skirt is just like a tough point. Next up we have Paul Mezcal wearing Gucci. Honestly, this Henley shirt in white makes a lot of sense to me. I think that it fits in with this whole sort of Paul Mezcal hot man vibe that everybody kind of goes for. He's not my type, but like, you know, live your best life. I get it. I think again, it's sort of simple, easy, effortless garment. It's something that is a part of people's wardrobes, but I feel like it's not super chic. So I think they're trying to make it a little bit more chic here. I think the pants are good. I think they fit well. And then some sort of sneaker is being worn. It looks like a sort of running trainer of some sort. Maybe it's like a Gucci Samba, Gucci Adidas situation. Who knows? Listen, like things fit well. That's good. I'm happy about that. Do I think it's, again, super chic and elegant and wonderful? No, but at the same time, I don't think it's bad. It's not really that memorable to me. So we'll do with that what we will. Next up we have Peggy Goo. Love. This Bottega moment is great. I love, I love this little tweed jacket that in reality, if we zoom in, we can see that at certain elements, it's actually like unpicked. And so it's starting to fray. And then as soon as we get to the waist, it just turns into a full fray experience. It then fringes itself out. It's ridiculous. It's preposterous. The fact that the sleeves actually start to fray exactly where the waist starts to fray is also amazing. Like it's just the perfect sort of line and everything is falling apart from there. I think that it fits in with Mathieu Blasey's whole idea of texture and playing with texture and working on garments that are actually exuberant and exciting and wonderful. And then the accessories do the talking. They're lovely. I think it's beautiful. I think it's exciting. It feels like there's an explosion right at that waist and I love it. And then on top of it, it fits beautifully. Everything is good. Everything about this is good, very happy, very content, love my life. Next up we have Pink Pantheris wearing Bottega as well. Now this is a halter black silk style. It has a little V plunge. And then I would say there is a drop waist effect where it's gathered and then it turns into an asymmetrical skirt. It's a little bit bubbly, it's, it's trying something. I don't know, I'm not obsessed with it to be honest. I, I just think A for me, it's not my favorite vibe in terms of black silk with a drop waist. I don't also like hate it completely. I think it's trying, it's doing something a little bit intriguing. It, you know, it's definitely trying to take a different approach to evening gown kind of vibes. I do like the styling. I love these shoes. They're ridiculous. They're bulbous. They're crazy. The bag, a beautiful sort of twisted hand done because all of those Bottega bags are actually like hand done and none of them are actually the same. They're all, since they're handmade, no singular bag in that style is actually done the same way. Somebody from Bottega taught me that and I'm very grateful to them. The dress, yeah, I don't know. Not obsessed. It's. I think it's the drop waist. I think it's asymmetry. I think it's just that it's a black silk dress, you know, but again, I understand it. The weather, hot, got it, totally fine. Next up we have Rosalia and she is wearing Prada. If you couldn't tell from the Prada sign back, there is a button down shirt in what seems to be a white and then a, maybe it's possibly a mohair gray sweater vest and then a long wool floor length skirt, but it's kind of like fitted at the hip area. I don't love it. Again, I do think that it fits into that sort of Prada commerciality kind of vibe. But at the same time, I will say there is like a styling element to it that I appreciate. I think the fact that the sweater vest is kind of short and shrunken compared to the shirt and the shirt sort of flows out of it. And then instead of a pant, you're doing this gray sort of tailoring fabric, but in a skirt version. Like I appreciate that. I do. I have to say. Do I think that again, it's the most exciting thing? No, but I think that we're trying to actually do something a little bit more intriguing with this commercial element. I don't love it, but I can appreciate it. 
Next up, we have Ryan Gosling, who is wearing Gucci. And the prompt, simple, so it's a black leather jacket. I do love the horse bit at the actual sleeve. I think that's cool. I think that plays into, you know, brand heritage. I think that's what they're trying to do over at Gucci. The white t-shirt, very simple. The black pant, very simple. The little loafer in black leather, I get. Plays into the jacket, totally fine. Again, I want more excitement, but I don't think that was the prompt, so I can't really be too mad about it. And I will also say with Ryan Gosling, he has been wearing a little bit more poppy and showy sort of things from Gucci, like the Barbie looks that he did for the red carpet for the promo was Gucci and he did, you know, spearmint green and pink. And so he was trying. So I understand that this is a little bit more toned down for a reason. Next up, we have Sana. She looks beautiful. I'm very happy. If you don't know Sana, she is from the K-pop group Twice. She's wearing this luscious little pink fitted product dress. Yeah, yes. I think the pink is glorious. It's gorgeous. I'm obsessed with a little collar. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with what looks to be like to me a little epaulette sort of detail at the shoulder. Again, you have these beautiful darts that really, really do fit that waist in there. And then on top of it, you can actually see that there's that cute little faux pocket. It's cool. It is almost like a collarless shirt, but it's built in. And it seems to be like that's what Prada has been doing at least last season, because this is a look from fall 2023. Seems like there's a whole vibe of building in these faux elements that make you think that you're looking at a collared shirt and you're really not. The length is also luscious, a little bit longer on her, but I also think that it kind of works here to be completely fair. Again, that color is just, it's good. The white shoes, the white bag, totally fine. Totally plays in, adds a lightness to it. Very happy. She's very beautiful. I can't be mad. Next up we have Troy Sivan who is wearing Gucci. Now this is what I like to see. I love this boiler suit. Do I think it fits well? No, but that's totally fine. I'm okay with that. I think that the color is great. It's that Gucci Ancora Rosso red in this beautiful sort of silky style. It has the Gucci blue and red striped band that runs down the side of it. So we're seeing that Alessandro sort of styles like those sweatsuits that were really popular with the side stripe. It's here. It's still a thing. It's not totally lost. It's not totally forgotten, which I think is important. And I think it's smart. And I think that designers should work off of other designers work just a little bit, adding in those touches, not totally forgetting those kind of vibes if that's what they choose to do. I like the fact that it's partially open. I like the fact that there's a little tank top underneath. It's cool. I'm into it. I like it. I want to see more of stuff like that. That plays into simplicity and easiness and all that jazz. So that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys all enjoyed and let's talk about best and worst. Best, I'm going to put Sana. I'm gonna put Charlie D'Amelio in Prada, Emma Watson, Prada, Dixie D'Amelio in the Ferragamo moment. That was a moment. Kind of shocker, Kylie. I thought that that chandelier reference was hot and cute and fun. I like Julia Roberts in the Gucci. Thought that was sweet. Peggy Goo in Bottega. Loved that moment. As for worst, Leah bought Gucci. I'm sorry. Letitia Wright, it was just a little bit blah in the Prada. There wasn't too much that I really hated. I think I understood where we were coming from in a lot of the cases. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video and TTY.